Hey guys, welcome to the fourth C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you about variables. So all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button, and once you've it on your form, just go ahead and double click on it. Alright, so I'm sure you've heard about variables before, and a variable is basically just a placeholder. It basically just holds the value of something, and then you can access it by simply typing the name of the variable. So the first step in creating a variable is typing the type of variable that you're going to create. And the first variable type that we're going to be looking at in this tutorial is a string. So we're just going to go ahead right here and type string. Now a string is basically just text. So we could set our string equal to like Adam or really any text. So now we have to give a name to our variable. You can name your variable anything you would like. But in like math or something like that, they usually just call it X or Y or O or something like that. But usually in programming, you're going to want to give your variable a name, something that you can remember. So you can name it something like name. And I'm just going to have this string hold my name. So we're just going to want to set this equal to text. So you're just going to want to put the equal sign. And then to represent text in C Sharp, you're just going to want to put two quotes. And then inside of these quotes, you can put the text that you want your name variable to hold. My, now, my name's Adam, so I'm just going to put Adam right here. So every time that we want to access Adam, instead of typing out Adam, we can just write name. And since name holds Adam, whenever we access name, it'll be like we're directly accessing Adam. All right, and of course, we have to end the line here with a semicolon. All right, so if we were to just type out message box dot show here, and put name in oops, we just put name inside right there, you would get a message box saying Adam. And that's because this name variable, and it's a string, holds the value of Adam. So we'd get a message box saying Adam, and you wouldn't get a message box saying name inside of it. Alright, so let's just make sure that this works here. Debug and click this button. Yep, we get Adam. Alright, and if we were to set this name variable equal to something different, then we would get a message box saying that person's name. So if we just got or set name equal to Joe, then this name variable will represent Joe right here. So every time that we access name, now it represents Joe. So now we'll get a message box saying Joe. Yep, Joe. All right, so that's really all there is to a string variable. The next variable type that we're going to be looking at is called an int. So we're just going to want to type out right here, int. And an int is basically just numbers, so an integer. And following the name of the type of variable that you're creating, you're going to want to give a name to your variable. So I'm just going to call it number, since an integer is basically just a number. And I'm sure you've learned that in math, um, an integer can only be, or it has to be a whole number, so it has to be like, like 1 or 2 or 3 or negative 5 or something like that. So now we're just going to want to set it equal to a number. I'm just going to set it equal to 5 since 5 is my favorite number. And now every time that we want to access 5, instead of having to type out 5, we can just type out number right here. So we can just say number and we'll have a message box display number. Now since number is not a string or text and this message box calls for us to pass through a string, we're going to have to use the toString. So we're just going to want to type right here dot toString. And toString will basically just convert this number right here, or this int, into a string so that we can access it or have it be displayed inside of a message box. So now, inside of our message box, we're not going to get number.toString. We're going to get a message box saying 5, since number represents 5, and we're converting that number variable into a string. Yep, 5. Perfect. All right, and obviously, if we were to set this number equal to something different, we would get that in message box. So if we got like 66, we set number equal to 66. Now this number variable represents 66. So we'll get a message box saying 66. Yep. All right. And the next variable type that we're going to be looking at is something called a bool. And you probably really haven't heard of a bool before, but a bool can just hold the value of either true or false. So if we just type out bool right there, now we're going to want to give a name to our bool variable. And again, you can call it anything you like. It's your variable. I'm just going to call it mm, red hair. And I don't have red hair, so I'm going to set this equal to false. And again, since this is a bool, you can set it equal to either true or false. Nothing different. 
So we're just going to want to type out false right there since I don't have red hair. Now to display this red hair variable inside of a message box, we're just going to want to type out red hair and then dot two string. So again, we're just going to want to convert it into a string. So we're just going to do dot two string. And now it'll just convert this red hair variable into a string. And again, we're not going to get a message box saying red hair dot two string. We're going to get a message box saying false because we're converting this red hair variable into a string and red hair represents false. So now we're just going to get a message box saying false. Yep. You can also set a bool equal to true. So if we were to just say right here true, now this red hair variable holds the value of true. So now we should just get a message box saying true. Yep. All right. So the last variable that I'm going to be showing you is something called an object. And you can set an object equal to anything. So an object can hold the value of literally anything. So we can just type object right here. And now we're going to want to give a name to our object or to our variable. And I'm just going to call it my object, but you can call it anything you would like. And again, we're just going to want to set it equal to something. So we're just going to put an equal sign right there. And now we're going to want to um, have this object hold the value of something. And again, we can set an object equal to anything. So if we wanted to set it equal to true, we could do that. So now, in order to display our object inside of a message box, we're going to have to do dot to string again because an object obviously isn't a string. So we're just going to say my object dot to string, and it'll just convert this object into a string. So we should should get a message box saying true, since my object represents true. Yep. And you can set an object equal to anything, like I've said. So if you want to um, have it hold the value of a string, you can do that. So we want to uh, set it equal to Adam, then we can do that. So now we should get a message box saying Adam. Since our object holds the value of Adam, so we should now get a message box saying Adam. Yep. You can set it equal to an integer as well. So if we wanted to set it equal to a number, like 5, now my object right here, or this object variable, represents 5. So when we convert this object into a string, we're just going to get a message box saying 5. Alright, yep, perfect. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial on using variables. So, see you guys.